In this video, I explain CBAM convolutional block attention module paper that is published in ECV 2018. It basically tries to extend the idea of a squeeze and excitation paper in, that is published in, in CVPR 2018, and it just tries to add some sort of attention modules just to cause the CNN models to perform better. So yeah, let's just see that. Okay, so let's just say we have an input feature volume like this. And our goal is to improve the model performance by adding some sort of modules to our CNN models. One of the first things we can do is adding what's so called channel attention module, which is basically what I explained in a squeeze and excitation video. And in summary, it just tries to pay more attention to some channels more than the rest, because those channels are more informative. But Adding channel attention module is what we already had in a squeeze and excitation, and there isn't any novelty here. And the main contribution of this paper is adding one additional module, which is called spatial attention module, which just tries to pay more attention to some spatial dimensions. For example, if we have an image of a dog, we know that the dog is located in only one small area of the image. And if we give the model an ability to learn that this area is more important than the rest, then hopefully we can get even a better result. And that's the whole idea of this paper. You might have a few questions here that's why do we at first apply channel attention module and then a spatial attention module? Why don't we do this in parallel or in reverse order? Actually, the others in the paper didn't provide any intuition or theoretical reason why, and they just empirically tested the different scenarios and they realized that this setting performs the best. So we just need to accept that by just some theoretical findings. And just for seeing what's inside this channel attention module, it's actually a bit more advanced compared to squeeze and excitation. And given an input feature F, in a squeeze and excitation, we do average pooling to have a representation of what's going on in each channel. But here, in addition to average pooling, we perform max pooling because the others believe that with max pooling, we might have some representations that we cannot have that using average pooling. So we perform both of them at the same time, and we pass the result to a shared MLP, which outputs two separate vectors, one for max pooling and one for average pooling. But ultimately, we need one single vector to say that which channel is more informative than the other one. So we take their sum, and as usual, we pass them through a sigmoid nonlinear function, and we have our channel attention M of C. And regarding the shared MLP in the middle one, it's exactly like what we had in Excuse and Excitation. We have two layers and one ReLU nonlinearity in between. And now let's just see what's inside this spatial attention module. Given our channel refined feature F prime, the first thing we need to do is we perform max pooling and average pooling, but not in a spatial dimension like before but in channel dimension. So for every pixel vector we perform max pooling, we have one output blue feature map, and we also perform average pooling, which outputs this brown output feature map. And we concatenate them together, and then we pass them through a conv layer just to learn which area is more important. And for conv layer, they used 7x7 kernel because uh, they in practice, they perform different experiments, one with 7x7 seven seven kernel, one with 3x3 three three kernel, and one without max pooling and average pooling, and only 1x1 one one kernel. And they realized that this setting, that max pooling and average pooling at first, and then 7x7 seven seven kernel, performs the best. So, as usual, we have a sigmoid followed by that, and that basically outputs our spatial attention M of S. And for integrating it with ResNet, we do not have anything fancy. It is exactly like what we had in Exquisite and Excitation. So we have an input feature volume, followed by a convolution layer, 
that makes our input feature F, then we pass it through a channel attention, followed by spatial attention and the skip connection, and we have our output feature volume for the next com blocks. And comparing the result, we can see that adding a squeeze and excitation causes the model to perform better, but by adding CBAM, it even performs better than a squeeze and excitation. And in my opinion, one of the most interesting thing here is that uh, if we just compare ResNet 50 with ResNet 101, we can see that ResNet 50 plus CBAM achieving way better than ResNet 50 plus squeeze and excitation and way better compared to ResNet 101 while the computational complexity of ResNet 101 is like around double the ResNet 50 plus CBAM. And the final thing to mention here is that the others were kind of interested to see that adding CBAM really causes the model to pay more attention to spatial dimensions to find out which object we do we have and based on that classify that which category this image belongs to and so they used gradcam and as we can see in the first column if we have an image of a tail frog by applying resnet 50 it only focuses on a small area of the image and based on the texture it realizes that yeah there is a tail frog in this image but Adding a squeeze and excitation module, it performs almost the same because it only focuses on the channel, not the spatial dimensions. But adding CBAM causes the model to kind of pay attention to the whole area of the object. And that's probably why CBAM achieves the best performance. And yeah, that was the whole thing you need to know about CBAM. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.